<laughs> All right, so the next talk is going to be the analysis of the McLeese public key crypto system based on polar codes. I just learned that our speaker um, is Vlad Dragoy, and it's joint work with Magali Bardet, Jules Decollet, Ayub Odmani, and uh, Jean Pierre Tillich. So please go ahead. Hello, everybody. So uh, I will present you today a cryptanalysis of uh, McLeese uh, public key crypto system based on polar codes. Um, as, um, as Tanya said, this is a, a joint work with uh, uh, Jean-Pierre, who doesn't break uh, doors but breaks crypto systems, <laughs> uh, Ayub Odmani, Magali, and uh, Julia Cholet. So I will uh, briefly present you uh, the McKellis uh, crypto system. It was already done, but just to recall the the scheme, uh, at the base of the crypto system, we have uh, two facts. Uh, a public key has to be a, a random um, um, linear code or a random basis for linear code. And the private key, the set of parameters for, uh, for the decoding algorithm. Uh, at the, uh, the original uh, crypto system uh, proposed by McLeese was with uh, binary GOPA codes. After that, there were many variants using uh, a lot of codes, and uh, today we'll uh, interest uh, in uh, polar codes. Okay, so the key generators, the key generating step, as uh, said before, uh, we generate a, a matrix for the code, and uh, the code has to uh, decode uh, t, error, t errors with a low complexity algorithm, and uh, we in a way, you uh, scrambled uh, this, uh, this code by uh, multiplying to, uh, to the left, uh, uh, changing the basis, and on the right with the uh, permutation of the columns. Uh, this is the original scrambling technique. And so, as my colleague said, uh, the public matrix is uh, SGP, and, uh, and the private key uh, is the three S, G, and P. Okay, encryption, uh, as I said before, just uh, encode your, your message and add, uh, add some, some, some errors. And to decrypt, use, the, use P and S uh, and the decoding algorithm to, to retrieve your message. Okay, this is the original scheme and mainly for all of the variants, uh, looks like that. So some arguments for polar codes. Uh, polar codes uh, are a very powerful family of codes, and it was natural to propose them as a McAleese uh, variant. And why is that? Uh, mainly uh, two big arguments. They allowed to attain uh, the capacity of any memory channel. There were several papers that were proving that uh, for the binary erasure channel and for, uh, uh, for uh, BMDS also, uh, it attains the capacity. And uh, they also, can be decoded with a very low complexity algorithm. The complexity of the algorithm proposed by Arikan, it's a uh, big O N uh, log N, where N is the length of the code. So a very fast one. Um, the third argument that was uh, evoked uh, in, in the, in the crypto uh, when the crypto system was proposed is that the polar codes do not seem to be very structured. We will see later that they have um, they resemble a lot with the Reed Miller code, but it uh, we do not have many uh, we do not have any knowledge of their structure, at least at the algebraic uh, structure. So Schrestein Kim proposed in 2014, normally a mechanist. We expect it to have uh, um, uh, a crypto system using polar code. Um, so our main contribution uh, in this paper is to, to find the permutation P, okay? So we have the same model as GP, and we, have to, we will find the, the permutation P. In fact, for those who know uh, more on coding theory, we will try to solve the code equivalence problem. But I, I will not, uh, it's enough to, to understand that our purpose is to, to find the permutation P. Okay, so uh, let's define the polar codes and see the relation a little bit with uh, Reed Mueller codes. Um, they are defined through a generator matrix, which is the chronicle product of the Hadamard uh, uh, matrix. And how we define them, uh, we set the length, and then we take uh, K rows by a specific rule uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of GM. This is the polar codes, and the Reed Mueller codes, we take 
uh, we choose the rows of GM having uh, Hamming weight greater or equal to two to the power m minus r. R, in fact, uh, the um, the rth order Reed-Muller code corresponds to evaluation of polynomials uh, of degree uh, lower or equal to to r. And this fact it will be very helpful uh, in in, uh, in the future uh, slides to understand why polar codes and uh, and uh, Reed-Muller codes are monomial codes and decreasing monomial codes uh, furthermore. So let's see how it looks uh, the generator matrix like G1 it's as I said G2 this is the Kronecker product G2 it's a four blocks matrix and looks like that so. You have it here, and for m equals three is the same Kronecker product, and looks like that. So let's see what's the polar code of length eight and uh, and dimension five. You take the uh, the last uh, five uh, rows of the matrix, and the Reed-Muller code, the first one, it looks like that. Okay, so you have one uh, row that the row, one row that is different. Okay. So recall that our purpose is to find the permutation, okay, for the code. The, the attack is based uh, on finding the permutation, okay? So how can you find the permutation? There is like general methods, like try to use the uh, supporting splitting algorithm by Nicolas Andrier. And you mainly need two ingredients to do so. You need one big ingredient, it's the permutation group has to be small. The permutation group is the group that leaves your code invariant. And the second big ingredient, it's the dimension of the hull. The hull is the, the um, intersection. Yes, I, it, it's a mistake. It's, inter it's really the intersection between the code and the dual. And uh, the dimension of this code has to be really small in order to, to have a successful attack. OK? Or you can try, or you can try to uh, to attack by adapting the Minder Chocolat attack on the Reed Mueller codes. So these two codes resemble a lot, and you could imagine how to adapt the, the attack to polar codes. But the problem is that it doesn't work. Polar codes are not vulnerable neither to SSA attack, neither to Minder Chocolat attack. So why aren't they uh, vulnerable? The question is, what is the permutation group of, color, of polar codes? If you understand the permutation group of polar codes, you will understand why they are not vulnerable, and you, you could try to, uh, to attack the polar codes uh, with another method. And this is our purpose here, to give the method and to, and to show what the, permutation, what the permutation group, in fact, uh, a subgroup of the permutation group of polar codes. Okay, so we will introduce an algebraic formalism, and this formalism will allow us to discover properties of polar codes that were, were not known, and properties about the permutation group of polar codes that really are important for our attack, are crucial for the attack. So we set the, um, the ambient space as a polynomial ring, cautioned by the, by the ideal uh, uh, of the, the Frobenius um, action on all of the variables. And it is normal to, to define the evaluation of all polynomials on the points of uh, the vector space. So uh, we will define uh, Metcal M as the set of all monomials. So let's recall our generator matrix, our uh, G3, the matrix from the beginning, and try to see how the evaluation of monomials give us this matrix, okay? So we start with the biggest monomial, which in case for m equals three is x2, x1, x0. So it evaluates, on, it gives one only on one point and on the others you have zero. So forward, we take x2, x1 and we obtain one, one and zero and so on, okay? we obtain exactly the matrix G3. And right now, let's take a look at our codes from the beginning. Remember the example, like the polar code, right here, the set of rows in the generator matrix, right now they are monomials, they are, they are evaluation of monomials. And right now, let's 
check it for the read Mueller code. The first read Mueller code, it's, as I said, the variables having degree less or equal to one. Okay, so the conclusion to this, uh, of this, um, of this uh, formalism is that both monomial and polar codes can be seen as, uh, and, and read Mueller codes can be seen as monomial code. Okay, we will go, uh, we will step a little bit forward and try to set up an, uh, an order because it's normal to try to put an order because read Mueller codes, as I said, they are with ordered by degree, okay? For polar codes, it's a little bit more tricky to find the order. And what we would like to do is to unify these both families by putting an order which will respect read Mueller codes and both uh, read Mueller codes and, and, and polar codes. So this is the order. I do not expect you to understand here because I don't understand it neither here. <laughs> but I have something much more interesting and much more uh, uh, visual. Let's see what the order does. So you take the first, one, the first uh, uh, monomial, which is one. It's smaller than x, x0. Then it's smaller than x1, which is smaller than x1, x0, and x2. And here we have the first set of monomials which are not comparable. Okay, and we go so on and on, and we create the graph representing our order. You can see here we, are, we have s five couples, five pairs of monomials that are not comparable. Our order is a partial order. And uh, we remark the fact that, uh, take for example, x0, x1. x0, x1, it's smaller than all of the monomials of degree 2, 3, or 4. Take, for example, x0, x1, x2. It's smaller than all of the monomials of degree 3 or 4. In fact, this is the fact that uh, this is the, the remark that we, uh, uh, we, that, that we can uh, observe on the, on the graph with the order, and which is a, a very important remark for our attack. So I will recall it when we are going to explain the attack, but uh, keep it in mind. So, let's define now what is a decreasing set. I define the order, saying a set is decreasing, it means that whatever I take a monomial in the set and another monomial that is smaller than this one, than F, the, this, the monomial which is smaller than the monomial in the set is in the set, okay? So all of the smallest monomial than uh, the, the monomial which is in the set, they are in the set. This is the natural way to defined for us it was natural to define the decreasing set and therefore we will define a monomial code if the set of monomials it's a monomial set then the code is a monomial code if the defining set are polynomials we say that we have a polynomial code and in the same sense if the set is a decreasing set we will call it a decreasing monomial code okay so main properties we have two big properties of uh, decreasing monomial codes. The first one, it's a, it's a theorem uh, proven by Bardet in uh, 2016, is that polar codes are decreasing monomial codes. And this, is, this, this theorem is it's very important because in fact what it says that uh, you consider a, a, a polar code whatever that you consider on the, uh, on the back or on uh, BMDC or uh, wherever the channel, memorized channel, binary symmetric memories channel, this code will always be, with respect to our definition of the, uh, of the order, will be a decreasing monomial uh, code. So you can see all of, the of the pol uh, all of the polar codes as decreasing monomial codes. And this is very important because decreasing monomial codes allow us to define properties like duality, like permutation group, properties that weren't known for polar codes. Even they were known for read Mueller codes because they're well defined, but for polar codes they were not known. So what we say that the dual of a decreasing monomial code is still a decreasing monomial code, which is nice. Recall that for those who know that for read Mueller code, this is the case. And as a consequence, uh, we have a nice property saying that polar codes with rate sufficiently smaller than half are weakly self-dual. So this, recall that this was one of the biggest ingredients for the SSA algorithm. We needed a hull 
with a small dimension. But here, the dimension of the hull is the dimension of the code for which the SSA algorithm will not work on polar codes. Okay? The, the second ingredient was the permutation group. So the permutation group. This is a very big question, and we didn't answer what is the permutation group of polar codes. But we answered, we give a partial answer to this question. So we consider the lower triangular binary matrix and, uh, the, um, and B as an arbitrary element. In fact, B will represent for us translation and A will represent changing variables. Okay, for M equals five, this is the, this is the matrix A and B and the vector B. Uh, we define the lower triangular affine group as the transformation that sends x to a times x plus b. In fact, a changes the, the, the variables and b does translation on the variable. And if we see that, if we see the fact that the variable is, is sent through this group uh, action into another variable, we can prove that the, this lower triangular affine group it's included in the permutation group of a decreasing monomial code. And the, the, the proof of this theorem, it, it's based on, on, on this remark. Okay? So we could go furthermore and try to cryptanalyze the polar code. We have all of the ingredients. I will just recall some technique and we'll see how to do it. A natural technique in coding theory, in coding theory is to use puncture codes and uh, shorten code. Puncture codes, it's very easy. You take, you take your code and you uh, take the support, you take a support, you take a set of indexes and you erase all of the, com all of the indexes, all of the, uh, uh, the, the parts of the code that are in the indexes. And the shortened code, the shortened code, it's a little bit more tricky. In fact, you take only the code words that, that equal zero on this index, and then you puncture it, okay? So we will use these techniques, and we will use the signature. The signature was already defined. In wh what we really have to know uh, for the signature is that the signature of elements in the same orbit is the same, it's equal, and the signature for elements that in, are in two different orbits is different. Okay, so elements in the same orbit have the same signature. Elements in, the, in different orbits have different signatures. Signatures will be used here to distinguish uh, elements. Okay, so as I said, we recall the fact that x0, xr minus one, it's always in the code. If I say that the, the biggest degree of my variable is r, this monomial, particular monomial, it's always, it's always in the code, okay? And also, we define the orbit of this monomial as, as, as only translations. In fact, this monomial is particular. We cannot change variables, we can do only translations, okay? So it's easy, so after that we will see that this monomial can be distinguished, okay? So the main steps, the main steps is at the beginning, we find the minimum weight code words, both in the code and in the permuted code. This is the first step. The second one, we set up a signature, and here, in this case, the signature was the minimum weight code words in the jewel of the shortened code, and the dimension of the jewel of the shortened code. Okay, this is the same for the, for the code and the, for, for the permuted code. Uh, the third major step is that we will use this signature and the action of the lower triangular group in order to distinguish, as I said, the particular monomial. And the last one is to puncture the code on the position where this monomial equals zero and to solve the code equivalence problem for the, for the punctured code, okay? This step here is done on blocks, which are very small blocks, okay? So it's easy to compute. Uh, I will detail all of, all of the four steps in the, in the following graphic. So the first step, 
you take the minimum weight code words, and on the on the permuted code, you don't know the structure, so we'll, you will use a generic uh, minimum weight code words uh, search algorithm like Dummer or Stern. In the code itself, uh, Bardet and all proved in 2016 that these minimum weight code words, in fact, are the images of the of the lower triangular group on the set of monomials with maximum degree. Okay, so there's a there's a bijection between the mini, the monomials and the the um, uh, the minimum weight uh, uh, the, the set of minimum weight code words. Next, I said that you you compute the dual of the shortened code on all of the supports for this uh, for, for for these code words, and then what we do what we do is that you compute the orbit. In, uh, for the color, for the polar code, you know to 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 compute the orbit. For the public uh, permuted code, you identify you identify the orbits using our signatures. We said that the signatures we use them to identify orbits or representing monomial for the orbit. Okay, so we do this. We use the signatures to identify the orbits, and then what we will try to find is that. Okay, so we identified x0 to x times xr minus 1. Now we will try to identify all the others that are smaller. In fact, we are trying to identify x0, xi, where i is smaller than r minus 1, okay? And how we can do that easily using the, uh, the characteristic of the, uh, uh, of the field, and you just compute the sum of the two monomials and you see that you obtain x0 to xr minus 2, okay? So uh, matching pairs uh, it, uh, allows us to identify all these monomials. So once we have these monomials, as I said, we will, we will use the puncture code and solve the code equivalence problem. So we defined these code words that are monomials smaller than x, uh, than the, than the, than the distinguished monomial, and then we puncture the code on the on the support on the uh, indexes where the code words equal zero. We puncture, and then we solve the code equivalence problem for for these uh, codes, and uh, we join blocks uh, up to the uh, up to uh, up to solving the code equivalence problem for the last one, which is the code itself. And we use the information that we have at each step, okay? So we implemented our attack on a 2 to the power 12 uh, uh, length uh, and uh, dimension uh, 614 polar code, which is able to correct 200 uh, uh, errors. And we computed the security level of this code uh, using uh, the complexity of the generic uh, um, linear code decoding algorithms like ISD, uh, which is 2 to the power 105. Uh, so what we did is that we checked all of the properties, like the duality, the, uh, the, the fact that they are decreasing monomial codes, uh, and then we computed the minimum distance and the number of minimum weight code words. Uh, this, this took like 27 seconds to find the minimum weight code words. Uh, and uh, yes, on a normal uh, processor, like. Uh, and um, next, uh, yes, yes. The uh, what I what I missed to say is that the 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 most consuming part was the last part. In fact, when we used induction, the most consuming part was solving the code equivalence problem for the whole code, knowing the permutation for half of the code. It, it's normal because it, it, it takes half of the length of the code to solve the code equivalence problem. And um, so in conclusion, yes, the polar codes, they are vulnerable, even they do not seem. They are vulnerable because uh, we managed to, uh, to introduce the, the, this formalism that revealed nice, nice properties of polar codes and uh, managed to, to, to allow us to propose this unified formalism for Reed-Muller codes and, and, and polar codes. And we hope that in the future, 
to, to discover much more things about polar codes using this formalism. Okay, so uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Are there any questions? Ludwig. So actually I have uh, two questions. So my, uh, the first one is that, uh, so there is a paper of uh, Shisov and Borodin about an attack uh, on uh, Reed and Miller codes. So, well, so it uh, seems to be more efficient than uh, Minder and Chukulai. So do you have considered this uh, attack? Yes, indeed, we have considered this attack, and uh, this attack, in fact, uses uh, two operations, dual of codes, and dual of Reed-Muller codes are Reed-Muller codes, and the uh, sure product of uh, Reed-Muller codes, which is still a, a Reed-Muller code. We tried to implement the, this, uh, this attack, but it doesn't work on, on polar codes. In fact, what happens is that if you apply this uh, uh, this this two um, operation, you still get a decreasing monomial code, but in fact, what you do is that your permutation you change your permutation group. In, the 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 main idea for Reed Mueller codes is that even if you do these two per two operations, you will still get the same permutation group. It doesn't change it for Reed Mueller codes, but for polar codes, it changes. You get a polar code that contains another polar code. The permutation group is not the same. So in fact, you denaturate uh, the the permutation group of your the initial permutation group. So it it, it doesn't it doesn't work. It might work. It, in fact, I tried some uh, specific configuration for the polar code, and if you change a little bit the the, the hypothesis, maybe it works. But it's really a specific. Uh, configuration and uh, in the general ca case it doesn't work but we tried it we tried this uh, we tried this uh, this approach okay more questions they have maybe another one <laughs> yeah uh, finally can you say that the scheme is really broken b because you have still to find low weight code words so there is no parameter for which this is going to be difficult? Uh, not, uh, in fact, not computing the low weight code words will be difficult because uh, in, the in, in, the, in the set of monomials, you recall that the set of monomials that give the minimum weight code words are the set of monomials with highest degree, with maximum degree. I, I call it R. Here. But this set of monomials for polar codes will never reach the set of monomials for which for as in the Reed Muller code. So it is it's a, it is a small set. In fact, you can see these codes as uh, some codes that are included in the Reed Muller code, and they 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 have a Reed Muller code uh, that is contained in them. So the set of minimum weight codes it's not a it's not really a problem in a f f for the codes. Yeah. All right, so with that, please join me in thanking the speaker again. <laughs>